here in Canada or want to learn more about Canada, today we're going to go over all the sub-250 FPV rules. There's this guy, Don Joyce, and he has a great channel full of informative information. I actually screenshotted like a whole pile of this stuff because I wanted to make this video, but then I didn't because I just got lazy. But our last video took a bit of heat on Reddit. A few Karens got angry. So now we're going to just talk about the law, make it nice and clear so everyone can understand. L let's just start off by saying all the drones I fly are 225 grams or less. Most of the time I'm flying at around 200 grams and I even have a 98 gram drone with a GoPro that I fly around also. Don goes over the regulations for the DJI Neo, which is a sub 250 drone. If you really wanna like learn more and really get into laws, learn how to get your certificate, all that stuff, this guy's a great guy to go to. So link to his channel in the description. In Canada, we are regulated by three weight classes and nothing matters to us except for the less than sub 250. The weight class is determined by the all up weight. So not the weight of the drone, but the weight of the drone with the camera and the battery. And the weights I told you are the all up weight. This is basically the only law that sub 250 pilots have to obey. Don't be reckless or endanger anyone. Reckless and all this stuff depends on different factors and different people. So it's the kind of rule that nothing can be done about it unless something goes wrong. So if you fly your drone into someone and hurt somebody, then yes, you were flying in a reckless manner. You endangered someone, you hurt someone. If you flew into an airplane, you're in trouble. You know, like if you actually screw up, that's where you will get in trouble or could get in trouble. Even if you screw up, it doesn't even mean you'll get in trouble unless someone presses charges on you or unless the cops come after you. All the sub 250 rules are mostly should, they're not must. You could see Mr. Steel flying and say that that is reckless. But if he flies like that all the time, it's just normal to him. So th there's a lot of uh, somebody sees something and they feel something those feelings are not facts and they don't matter. You could see someone flying in a way that you feel is reckless. And if that bothers you, that's okay. Good for you. It's kind of like saying this person is a danger to society, but they've never hurt anyone. You can't say a person is a danger to society because they walk around with a knife in their pocket. They haven't hurt anyone with the knife in their pocket until they take the knife out of their pocket and hurt someone. So until they do that, they, they haven't endangered or hurt anybody. So you can't accuse them or get mad at them for what they could do. You know, you could get into a car and smash into someone. The moment you get into a car, you have a much higher probability of hurting people than I would flying my drone or anyone, basically. And that all changes too, right? If you get someone that's never flown a drone before with a brand new setup and they go fly in the middle of the city, that would be reckless, but it couldn't be charged unless they did something stupid. You can't get in trouble for what you could do. You get in trouble for what you do do. All of Toronto, all of like Toronto is a class C airspace. So you cannot fly five inch drones anywhere in Toronto. You can't fly the CN Tower. You can't fly in the city unless you get permission. If you're sub 250, you can't fly at like the helipads or whatever, but Basically, you can fly anywhere that is not class F airspace. The CN Tower is not class F airspace. The whole city is class C airspace. So the only places that we're restricted from flying, we can't fly in national parks and we cannot fly in class F airspace. The whole city is class C airspace. The whole sidewalks and stuff, that's all public property. So you're flying in public property you can fly in public property. You can't fly in private property. And I believe that even in national parks, if you fly from public property over the park, as long as you're not taking off or landing in national parks, you're good. And then there are certain things that happen where sometimes 
you can't fly in a in a certain area, a notum airspace restriction. So for instance, Taylor Swift showed up in the city and was performing at the Rogers Center. You couldn't fly the CN Tower then. You couldn't fly around there. You couldn't fly there because it was an area that was a no-fly zone specifically for an event. So these can show up all the time, and when they show up, you can't fly when in those spaces. There's going to be some drone-only no-fly zones in 2025. I don't know where those will be. All I know about right now is you can't fly at Parliament Hill or Niagara Falls. Oh yes, we're not allowed to bring stuff into prisons. <laughs> these are guidelines. He has these guidelines. They're not rules. Uh, failure to follow safe guidelines may be considered reckless or negligent. May, right? Once again, if you haven't broke the law, if you haven't done something, like it's like you go into a store and you want to steal. And you can take the item, you can put it in your pocket until you walk out of the store. You haven't stole it. It's like that. So people will see these things like stay like all these things. These are nice safety things and they're good. And that's that's what you should do. But they're not the law. There's no law forcing that. So you could get in trouble for, let's say, mischief or something. You could get in trouble for something like that. But once again, it would have to be proved. No one's going to put you through the court system for the sake of something that they can't prove. This guy also has an app that you can use that uh, lets you know where you can fly all the time, but you'd have to buy it off him. And it's, I think it's like 50 bucks or something. The biggest problem that we have and will ever have is within our own community. That uh, people want to be mean to each other or cause problems for each other. If you do not like someone, it, let's say you don't like me, go away. Don't come back. That's the best way that you can hurt me. But if you were to try and cause trouble for any pilot and that ends up causing, you know, problems for us, then you would be the one causing the problems so you see it's just like it, the self nonsense within our own community the whole like picking on each other stuff that's one of the most harmful things in our community to let you know i'll never be bullied out of doing what i'd like to do it'll never happen even if all of you started hating me because of the way that i fly i'll fly the way i fly until that is taken away from me until i go through the court system if i have to go through the court system for doing something dumb or whatever then i'll do it and then i might stop doing it but until that happens you're gonna you're gonna see me doing what i do and you can love that and you can hate that but that's me and you're you make choices for yourself make good choices for yourself and don't um don't turn <laughs> Don't turn things into something that they're not. When I, when I fly my drone, I am nice to people. 98% of the time, it's a positive thing. Most of the time when my drone sees someone, if I know that it bothers them, I leave. If they are happy and they smile, I'll wave at them and stuff. But another thing that was mentioned was that they, I'm, um, what is it? <laughs> someone pulled up the uh, laws on voyeurism voyeurism and that's basically spying on people when they're doing sex <laughs> and i'm not doing that if i saw anything remotely close to something like that i would get my drone out of there and i wouldn't post that i go and i say hi to people if i see someone with my drone and they see me right away oh hey that's cool lots of the time they're fascinated and find it cool most of the time it's not a negative thing they'll wave they'll say hi bye and then that's it usually security even even if I'm in a place where I'm like indoors, security says leave. We like, oh, that's super cool. But like, you can't be here. There was another time I was flying with security guards and zipping around like outside one of the recent videos. And they both asked for my card. Like I gave them my business card. It was like, hey, if you ever need a drone guy. Uh, and that's usually how it is. Also, my drone is quiet. It's very quiet. It's very small. Uh, anyone that's kind of like been around me and seen me fly, they're like, Oh wow. It's so quiet. It's so like, like whatever. So I'm not flying a five inch and I have fully flown 
my drone at full speed into myself and nothing's happened. Craziest comment though that I see over and over and over again is, you're the reason we're going to lose all our privileges or we're, you're the reason we're going to get more laws and stuff. And it's like, no, you know what? Those laws are coming regardless. And when they do, then maybe I won't, well, yeah, when they do, I won't be able to fly the way I do. So right now I'm enjoying the freedom while it lasts. There's people bloody strapping bombs to drones and killing people. And, and then you're, you're going to like complain at me for having an ex exciting little flight. <laughs> like, come on, like. Put things into perspective, okay? When you get angry, it does it doesn't help anyone. And it's definitely not gonna change me at all. Get angry all you want. When you leave a negative comment, it helps my channel more than if you watch my comment. It helps my channel more than if you watch my content and enjoy it. If you watch my content and enjoy it and don't comment, the people that write I hate you, like they're actually doing more for me than the ones that are pleasantly enjoying. If you're new, welcome. I'm Matthew. I design drones. I like to fly them around people <laughs> and buildings and diving. And I love that kind of stuff. I love making content that you see and say, I don't see that anywhere else. And some of you will see that and be like, this guy's an idiot. No one should be doing that. Or they'll be like, wow, I've never seen that before. That's cool. They do it because I enjoy it. That's the only way I really enjoy kind of flying. If I, if it can't be exciting, if it can't be a little bit, you know, risky, you, you got to risk it for the biscuit. <laughs> okay. Smoochy smoochy. Congratulations, you made it to the bonus part of the video. So now let's say Johnny over here is having fun outside with his drone. And he's having a great time flying it around, having a wonderful time. And now Karen shows up and she says, why are you doing that? I don't like you doing that. So now Karen goes, blah, 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 over to Daddy. And Daddy says, if you guys can't play together, then go inside. And now Karen and Tommy don't get to play outside anymore. Whose fault is it? Is it, is it Tommy's fault for flying his drone and having fun? Or is it Karen's fault for, for doing nothing? For just being a little rat. <laughs> they could have both played outside. Karen could have avoided Tommy and did whatever she wanted. They both could have played, you know? But because Karen went to go rat on Tommy, now neither of them get to play. So... <laughs> we have enough problems in life without 30 to 40 year old men ratting on each other. Like, come on. If somebody wants to have fun, let them have fun. It, it, the thing that blows my mind in the FPV hobby is that we want to have fun. We want to fly, okay? <laughs> Why are you gonna go out of your way to get mad and bothered by something somebody else is doing? If you don't like what someone else is doing, avoid them. <laughs> what was the other one? Someone told me recently about a family where basically what would happen is if any of the siblings ratted on each other, they both got spankings. And then eventually they stopped ratting on each other and they learned to get along. So can we all just get along? Because I... <laughs> Just pretend I'm drowning. You don't need to help me because I'll drown you with me. But I wouldn't drown anyways, because they know how to swim. The real reason that our community is falling apart is because we can't stand together. We can't get along with each other. And there's, there's so much nonsense that doesn't have to be here, you know? And then when regulations come, everyone is too lazy to get off their butt and go fight them. And that's the real reason we're going to lose FPV. Because when these rules come, you're too lazy to get off your plump butt and go do something about it. And if we can't stand together, 
we will all fall apart. That's the real problem. It's not from somebody like me having fun with my drone. Especially not when there's people killing people with drones and there's people flying drones into bloody aircraft. That's how Dubai lost their drone privileges because of something dumb like that. Get things straight in your head. And let's, uh, let's be something together. Let us all unite! This is a scotch bonnet. Is it recording? Yes. I'm trying to make myself cry for a thumbnail. Do you need another one? You I need to. You need to. Maybe I need water. Go no, get you me need a cup to. of water, please. Why? You're gonna dip it on your eyes? Uh, get me when it is and really wet it with water. <laughs> You're not crying. Come on, get me one of these and really wet it with water. Okay, I ain't getting one. Cold water? Yeah. Okay. You wet the whole thing. Oh, a okay. lot. Get it wet. Don't don't drink it. Don't drain it. Just get it wet. Okay. Okay, yeah. bring it over. Careful. Now be careful not to touch my eye. Okay. <laughs> Here's a whole playlist of fun videos.